Okay, so chapter four is um, chapter four is all about a, a case study in in Canada actually trying to classify the type of um, of stakeholders that you get or the champions of innovation. So uh, the chapter starts with stakeholders of both people actively involved in the project and those affected by it. The reasons for taking note of the stakeholder specific perspective is that the built environment directly affects the population at large. Um, the long term, even non-consenting -con stakeholders and people who have have no say in the definition of the project or its implementation. So it means there's a lot of people that actually benefit or is involved in a construction project because we're in creating a, an environment that people have to work in okay so the first uh, chapter looks uh, first the chapter looks at the creation of innovation and makes note of adoption and diffusion within um, how it it's basically introduction a little bit of background of what we've already discussed and then the sec second um, secondly it focuses on the intra and uh, inter organizational collaboration temporary organized um, temporary organizations that's whatever a, 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 what a construction project is and then thirdly it, uh, the concept of value is looked at okay and then the fourth um, item that they look at is the perception of value of the stakeholders um, at a certain time okay so certain stakeholders will have a certain value at a certain time of the project Okay, should innovation be a goal or should it be a means to achieve sustainable uh, sustainable competitiveness? Okay, so that's a question that you guys need to think about a little. And then recent contributions argue that it is people's attitudes or behaviors, not technology, that need to change in order to signify um, significantly reduce the relentless pressure on the environment. Um, one example of that is energy energy use. Um, a simple thing like um, switching off the light when you whenever you leave a room can have a big impact on on the energy consumption. Um, rather than um, going around and fitting um, motion sensors in, in all the buildings uh, without a very large cost, one can actually um, reduce uh, energy consumption. Okay, so that's that's the type of thing that they're looking at. So the chapter looks um, at certain conclusions. The first conclusion that that they make is value is not an intrinsic or objective given a property of the change being realized. It is rather a quality that is perceived uh, by someone. So within a certain context and time frame. Um, Again, I think um, I'm going to um, <clears throat> use this example of a um, of cars as an example of in the olden days, um, it would have been seen that uh, the more muscle, the more um, uh, valves you can fit into your car's engine, uh, the more innovative you are. Nowadays, it's all about energy consumption and being efficient. Um, so it is really a perception of what is innovation. Innovation is a bit of a perception of what the current need is and is constantly changing and evolving um, to take into account um, different things. And then secondly, given the innovation exists only if it is adopted or accepted, the larger the group of stakeholders who perceive this value, the more legitimate the change will become. The fusion is thus a cause of consequence of adoption and acceptance. So it's a public buy-in into this new technology. Um, for instance, um, solar energy. There should be, uh, or the, um, it's usually a public opinion that drives certain areas. Um, or, but as well, your econ the economic factors. Um, as soon as people are affected economically, uh, then that's a big driver to change. Um, so um, that's the ma other things that needs to be taken into account. Okay, then the chapter goes and uh, they um, classify certain champions. So you identify appropriate and different organizations and they bring them together and facilitate the dialogue and the exchange process between them. 
they solve inter-organizational conflicts, and they fulfill an important social task. Okay, so the champions are people involved on um, this, uh, these projects. Okay, then <clears throat> going further, there are corporate, cooperation, coordination, and collaboration. So this is important. Uh, cooperation is where people uh, cooperate cooperate with each other. Coordinate is where they actually sit around and say, yes, we're getting together and we're tackling this problem. Collaboration is where you have bring network and you bring in more uh, stakeholders into the fold. Again, okay, most authors agree that collaboration and participation play a fundamental role in public interest projects, particularly for widening uh, the stakeholder involvement behind traditional power um, elites and recognizing different forms of local knowledge, that's very important, and building rich social networks as a resource of institutional capital through which new initiatives can be taken rapidly and legitimately. Okay, so um, this you guys have to go through and unfortunately you have to learn this. This is quite an important uh, slide for me is creating conditions for innovation in the built environment. So in Canada, they, they from the research, they could classify um, the different stakeholders. So firstly, we have the meditation or mediation partner, a firm that accompanies the client and creates conditions conducive to collaboration and participation. Um, that is now a, a, an advisory um, to uh, to the client. Um, and then, secondly, you have the integrated client, uh, collaboration of different client stakeholders. Um, that is where a, a collective um, stakeholders actually um, form uh, the the client, like a board of directors, or, or so. Okay. Um, delegated project manager um, is a type of champion acts as a partner and delegated project um, as a delegated project manager. So this is usually someone that advises uh, the client and gives them technical um, advice. Then you've got community support organizations, usually a non-profit organizations as in intermediate between um, individuals and groups. So you can think about, um, a, um, for instance, a body corp um, of a complex it would be a community support organization, will, can be classified as a community support organization, um, where the community of that little complex actually contribute to the design of a building because it's going to influence them or and the market uh, value of their houses in, in that complex. Then you get a design integration team. Uh, that's a consortium that is now a whole design team. That's the professional team. Then you have the project in integration team includes partners such as financial managers, construction um, and um, construction cap uh, Capacities. This is a little bit more removed, like, more like a developer um, advising the client. Okay, and then you have participation of organizer of the organizer. Nonprofit organizations facilitate public consultation. Okay, so this is your public organizations, is, um, guys working with the public, um, like for instance with your municipalities, um, working with. Um, the town planners and so forth. Okay, so just to summarize, or the final thing is this: um, <clears throat> the champions types one, two, four, and six participate in all phases uh, of an intuitive up to closing, and then uh, type seven participation um, to a lesser degree in the approval phase. Um, so if you think about your project, um, there is um, a whole lot of phases. And what this slide just basically shows you is that um, the champions have different roles in um, different phases of the project. So a one, uh, uh, let me just get to that. Sorry, ah, here we go. 
Okay, so champions uh, one, uh, which is your uh, mediation partner, two, which is your integrated client team, your delegation project manager, uh, uh, no, sorry, that's three, uh, number four, your community support organization, and six, which is your project integration team, is all involved in all the phases um, up to closing. Okay, and then um, type seven um, participation of organize of the organizer. They're usually just uh, involved to a less degree in the approval phase. Uh, and then you've got type five, which is your design integration team, mostly during the design phase of your project. Then the, the chapter just closes off. Although some facilit um, facilitates technical innovation, which is um, types two, three, five, and six. Others establish better conditions for process-related uh, innovation. So please have a look on, at uh, this. This is actually on page, it starts on page 57 and it goes to page 58 uh, where this is stated. So please have a look on page 53, 54, 55, 56 and 57 of what all of these champions uh, include. And then as a conclusion, stakeholders' perspective was discussed in this chapter. Okay? Uh, this approach benefits from adopting a broader view of the built environment, putting less emphasis on the construction industry as a loan. And then the work of the, um, the champions varies according to the project phases and project life cycle. So I want you guys to, to go through this chapter and get it in your head uh, of uh, what stakeholders are involved in what phases of the project. Um, try and sketch a little picture for yourself, um, and um, so that w w if you d so that you can discuss this, um, if if one um, needs to list what type of um, champions are involved when. Okay, so this uh, also take note that this was uh, limited to Canada, so uh, try and make it applicable to us here in South Africa. And. I think that's it. Thanks, guys, uh, for listening. Uh, if there is any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thanks.